Hey guys, welcome back to this series that I abandoned for over a year. If this series was my child, I would not be a very good parent. To those of you who are new to this series, I pretty much rant about stuff I don't like. And no, I'm not copying another YouTuber with a similar title style. Anyway, getting back to the subject in the title, I'm gonna talk about why I hate driving. And, on a completely related note, as you will soon find out, I should mention that ever since I got my boosted board and have been writing it in several of my videos, I have gotten comments saying, Has a car! Uses boosted board! This guy is so sad that he you prefers need his to get booster a car. board Why as you his don't car. Drive car! Can you not afford a car? It's because I hate driving and I'm in love with this thing! Huh? Before I tell you guys why I prefer riding my boosted board instead of driving my car, which yes, I can afford, I have to show you guys how much I'm not over exaggerating about how much I use my boosted board compared to my car. This is the odometer of my car. I got it around August, but it already had 240 miles on it. And then, this is the odometer on my boosted board. I received it around May, and it had five miles already on it. So, why do I prefer riding this plank of wood that only gets a six to seven mile range, and hate driving this chunk of metal that gets a 370 mile range? My hatred of driving first started when I was trying to get my driver's license. My mom wanted to make sure I passed so she could stop paying my sister's friend to drive us both to school in the morning since we moved and there weren't any more school buses. That's not embarrassing. So, my mom had one of her friends sit with me while I drove randomly around Flagstaff and practiced parallel parking for hours. What a fun way to spend a weekend instead of jerking off. Even with all that tiring practice, I failed the road test four times! No stereotype jokes, please! The first time I failed, well, I don't know if it counts, but when the instructor was inspecting the car, turns out a brake light was out. Whoops, couldn't test that day. On the next try, I automatically failed, because when I was about to start the parallel parking test, the test lady said that I could circle the parking lot of the DMV to straighten out my car to get a better chance of parking between the cones. And I may or may have not cut through some empty parking spaces. That's why I automatically failed, because apparently driving through some empty parking spaces counts as a dangerous act. Next day, I started the test pretty good. I parallel parked perfectly, but when I was on the road, I misheard the instructor of what street I was supposed to turn down, and just drove past the turn I was supposed to take. Me and him didn't seem to think too much about it, he just told me to go down a different road to take the turn again. Then after we pulled back into the DMV, he told me I passed, and went to finalize my papers. I was so relieved, I remember calling my mom and telling her that I passed. Then, the instructor comes back outside and told me that he couldn't pass me, because some fucking in the office told him that I couldn't be passed if I made a wrong turn. Fuck. I passed the next day though. It was funny, because I got the same driving instructor as yesterday, and when we got to the turn I missed, he was just shouting for me to make the turn. So, from trying to get my driver's license, I hated driving from the beginning. Now, the boosted board. I got it four months after I got my driver's license, unfortunately due to a battery recall, you don't need to take any test or get any license to operate it. Just accept that you could die if you use it. I also have way fonder memories practicing how to use this thing. It was just me and some of my friends goofing off on an empty street in our neighborhood. And I got the hang of it in about two or three days. You just can't get these types of memories practicing for a road test. It's mostly just wanting to drive into a building because your parents are constantly screaming at you. But plain Rocky 1, 2, 3! That driver license crap is over now! Why do you still hate driving? Good question! Let's compare a drive in this versus a ride on this. First of all, I'm always stressed when driving. It begins when I have to ever so carefully pull out of the garage, 
through the driveway, and finally onto the street. <sighs> It's extra challenging if someone in my family is inconsiderate and leaves their car in the driveway instead of on the street. When they know I have to go somewhere in my car. So, I have to be very careful getting around their vehicle if they're too lazy to move it. <laughs> and if everybody's home and I want to go out, tough luck. I'm not getting my three family members to move each of their car out of the driveway so I can get out. If I want to leave before any of them, we have to plan out how to arrange the car so all of us can leave at our desired times the night before. Fun! Note, I'm the one in my family that barely uses their car, so that's why I have to keep it in the garage, always. Leaving on the boosted board? Well, even if everybody's home, I just set it down and skirt off between my family's inferior machines. That's it. What about driving on the roads in a car? That must be fun, right? Oh, where do I begin? There's even more stress on the road! At the same time, I have to keep track of the road, the speed limit, my speed, the other cars, road signs, the lanes, traffic lights, people crossing, and the GPS sometimes. It also doesn't help that most cars don't have a great field of view, meaning you can't see everything around you. I mean, for f sake! These frickin' pillars could be blocking sight of someone or something coming in front of your car before you hit them or it! And who knows how many tiny animals or children I ran over without even knowing it. Cause I can't directly see the ground right in front of me! And don't even get me started on traffic. Sitting in traffic makes me feel like I'm back in class again. Except I don't know when the class will end and I can't even get out to stretch my legs. Riding on my boosted board? That must be worse than driving, right? Hell no. First of all, I'm only allowed on the sidewalk or the bike lane, so most of the time, the only thing I have to keep track of is the road and not hitting anybody. Occasionally, I do have to keep track of the battery life or the GPS though. The thing also only goes 20 miles per hour, so I don't have to worry about the speed limit. I just rip the throttle as far as it can go and feel that breeze on my face. I also have a clear 360 degree field of view so I can be sure I won't hit anything or anyone. I can also see the road directly below me. So I know I haven't ran over any small animals or children yet. I almost ran over a gopher once. There's also no traffic in the bike lane or the sidewalk, so I don't have to worry about that as I ride past cars stuck in traffic. The only thing that stops me is the occasional traffic light or crosswalk. But I really don't mind because I'm not there for too long and I'm free to walk around and stretch my legs while taking in that fresh air and enjoying the sights. What about when you get to your destination? Well, if I'm in a car... MORE STRESS! I would have to find parking, carefully try to squeeze between other cars that don't know how to park, park and re-park until I'm in the lines, and when I'm in the store or wherever, I'm always worried about someone damaging or stealing my car. And if you're in a big city, you most likely have to pay for parking. Cause there's way too many cars there. When you get to your destination on a boosted board, what do you do? There's no parking. So just right up to the front of the building, pick it up and carry it inside. No worry about having to find or pay for parking. And no worry about someone damaging it or stealing it. Well, maybe if someone's ballsy enough to just snatch it from you, then yeah, you have something to worry about. Oh, bonus, if you're low on battery, just plug it in. Almost every place I've been to has an AC outlet. Free electricity! Did I also mention that this is a zero emissions vehicle? And finally, I'll talk about the price of owning each vehicle. This time, I'll start with the boosted board. Every time someone hears the price of one, they always freak out. The boosted board is the Mercedes-Benz of electric skateboards, all right? Get a cheaper electric skateboard if you want something less reliable. And for the people saying that you could get a car for the price of a boosted board, ew. First of all, a car that costs a thousand dollars probably blows. A car that only costs a thousand dollars will most likely require monthly maintenance, wasting time and money more than it's worth. The price of owning a car also includes many insurance and gas payments. Boosted board? No insurance needed. 
And electricity is way cheaper than gasoline. And it's free if you charge at places outside your home. Yes, it does need maintenance or new parts sometimes. But parts for it are definitely cheaper than car parts, and there are plenty of repair tutorial videos online, so you can easily maintain your boosted board by yourself. So it's most likely cheaper to own one of these instead of a really cheap car. Speaking of maintenance, did you know that you can't leave a car sitting around for too long or else the battery dies or a bunch of other bad stuff happens? Well that's just great, since I barely use my car ever since I dropped out of college. So apparently if you don't use your car much, you have to drive it around at least once a week for 15 minutes. Ugh. It's like taking care of a child that I don't want. To be fair, you can't leave your booster board sitting around for too long or else the battery will just completely die. But if it does get too low... Problem solved! Now the conclusion. I have definitely made it more obvious why I love this thing more than this thing. But honestly, there are some situations where you have to use a car. For example, if it's too cold, raining, snowing, or if the destination is really far away, or if I have to give someone a ride, or if I'm carrying a really big object. Although I have tried to push the limits of what I could carry on my boosted board. Anyway, the point is that you need a car and not a boosted board as much, unfortunately. In fact, the best option is to have one of each, if you can afford it. And it's okay if you love one thing more than the other. And that is why I hate driving my car and love riding my boosted board. It is actually a really great and practical piece of transportation more than you think. And don't you dare call it a toy. It's a really dangerous toy. But is there a way to make me not hate driving? Well, there is a car that will make me hate driving less. Yeah. Maybe someday. Thank you guys for watching. Comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. Bye. That could have been me. We're gonna see if you can go through the drive-thru on a boosted board. Can I drive through? Has anyone watched the movie on Netflix called The Wave? There's a scene where everybody is in their car trying to get to the top of a hill to avoid the wave, but there's too many cars on the road! Man, if I was there, I would have been riding past all those cars on my boosted board, screaming, Haha! You're all gonna die, f***ers! <laughs>